it's hard to put into words because it's something that you know is going to happen, but still you feel that elevated heart rate, yeah. you feel the breathing, you feel the nerves and the t tingles in your fingers and your toes. It's a nice feeling of nerves, though, I will say that. You're excited. First wave of the night session ever for the Surf Ranch Pro presented by 805 Beer. It's Matt McGillivray, the South African, going to set the standard for the 12 men on this leaderboard. And he's up and riding. Good positioning here on the barrel. Lovely exit there from McGillivray. Great snap to carve. Readjust his footing right here, halfway through the wave, the performance zone. And he's looked great so far. Got to be thinking, though, coming up against the names that's on the leaderboard, you need to be cracking at least in the upper sevens to make it out of this one. Possibly going excellent. As he's stalling for the second barrel, too. This is great work from McGillivray. Needs a strong finish and went for the big air. You can see the slight offshore tonight, Rosie. It will be affecting the airs on the right hand. The night session is that lip line can be somewhat deceiving mm -hmm. of really thinking about when it's coming at you and where to force the issue on your turns. Maddie got super deep on that barrel. I like that. He threw a lot of spray. He got some busy work done here on that inside section. Um, you know, it was a really solid wave. But I think as we head further into the seeded rounds, you're going to have to pull yeah. out everything. You're going to have to see something that's really going to stop you in your tracks. It's not going to cut it right now, is it? Yeah, I'm just feeling like we need a little bit more from Maddie. I mean, the barrel. And then obviously not getting the completion on what he was going for here, the, the aerial maneuver. I mean, Maddie has got such a good progressive approach to him, which is interesting. And opening score on the right from McGillivray, a 6.17. So that's what he's looking at better on this left right here. And he's up and riding. Last chance effort for McGillivray to really cement his spot on the top two of the leaderboard in the men's night surfing session. Late snap right there, makes it around it. Has a lot of work to do in front of him. Better work right there, slides the fins, nearly loses it. Caught behind. Is he going to make it around? Yes, he is. So more chance from McGillivray to keep working on this one. Seems so far that the left is a bit harder to surf at night than the right. Maybe the lights don't point in the same direction and he's just gonna go down right there in the end section barrel. Probably gonna keep the 6.17, Rosie. Have a keeper result. 100%. Um, so, so Maddie here on his backhand, it is a, it's, it feels like this is a bit different to what we saw during the day. The wind's kind of a different direction. It's got that little puff of offshore to it. Um, yeah, just uh, fun to see how the surfers adjust to these different elements and um, how they read the wave. You've got to really surf on intuition almost all of the time. Even though, even though you think the wave is the same, there are subtle differences every time a, a piece of water hits. Jet shilling in the water now. The number 11 seed on the leaderboard. Second surfer of the night session up and riding. Schilling from San Clemente just hammering this wave at the beginning. He looks motivated and gets caught behind, unfortunately, after maybe trying to do a bit too much on the outside section. He knew he needed to go for something big on the outside, Rosie, to make it out of this one. He hammered those yep. first three turns. The way here, yeah, he's really surfing solid. He's looking for that big score, lots of spray third belt right there goes for a fourth and that's where he gets a tiny bit hung up and you can't afford those tiny little mistakes they cost you big time oh and 2.5 to score and you do this at a beach break back home in San Clemente and Huntington Beach you're probably getting a nine <laughs> so <laughs> just need to clarify that Schilling now on the left has a lot of support from the San Clemente posse that are here at the surf ranch pumping him on great start opens up with the wrap once more, wants to bring in the variation. He has a great air game, too. And we want to see him use it here. That's more like it from Schilling. Into the lip once again, dynamic turn. A little behind the whitewater now. Makes it around it. A 2.5 is the only thing he's looking to better at the moment. That should help. Throws it around the 180. And caught behind. Can he make it around it? Oh, maybe, maybe. He's trying. And it doesn't seem like he's going to do it in time. So he's going to have to settle for a small score on this one. McGillivray has a 6.17 as his best, Rosie. At least bettering the 2.5 Schilling is right here. 
great while it lasted, though. I, I yeah, mean. he wanted to be just a hair in front of that section, and I think what threw him off was the turn before that one. Just threw off his rhythm a little bit. Yeah, and Schilling, unfortunately, just couldn't make it around this section right here. The Surf Ranch Grill presented by 805 Beer in Lemoore, California, and up and riding none other than the greatest surfer of all time, 11-time world champ Kelly Slater. First wave of the night session for him. Up on the right, he looks fast-paced. How's that layback dagger on the outside? Excellent positioning of the barrel. He's deep, and he's coming out. On the open face now, wraps it down into the lip line. Oh, oh. Kelly goes down! <sighs> Halfway through the wave, he was on his way to a great score. The best ridden wave from Kelly this year mm -hmm. on the championship tour. He got so deep on this barrel, he was getting super knifey on that FRK+. Plus. Oh, it was looking like it was shaping up to be such no. a... Oh, that little dig of the rail, too, that feeling is just... Oh, your stomach just hits rock bottom. That turn right there, just that patented Slater hack into the barrel. Super... Just, like, maintaining that... We were... Depth. We were witnessing greatness. Yeah, we were like, okay, I'm like, it's on. We're... we're we're going here. We're rolling. Oh, that, man. And you can tell, like, he he was really focused on that next yeah. section without recognizing where to kind of shift the weight mm. to propel forward. I mean, like, we're nitpicking right now because that is just one of those freaky things. That so here we go. Last chance for Slater. Will he be able to move up into the top two in the leaderboard and at least drop something into the sevens? We shall see. He's up and riding. Going left. Only has a 3.97 on the right. Much better here from Kelly. The board looks good on the left, two rows. He doesn't seem like he switched up like he did during the morning session, the qualifying round. A lot of flow. Kelly working through. Great snap. Amazing whitewater foam climb there from Slater. Deep bottom turn. How sick was that combo right there with the tail slide? Once again, the variation. Love to see it from Kelly. Oh, up into the lip. He's going to close for the barrel. He's in there. And too deep. So leaves a little meat on the bone at the end. Got to be thinking he's going to move up into at least second, bettering the 4-3-3 of Schilling. It's enough to keep him in the top two at the end of the round. Ah, uh, you know what? I don't think it's going to be enough. He didn't get the completion. Yes, this outside work that he did was impressive. There was a lot of spray. There was a lot of fluidity in his surfing. There wasn't that one wow moment, but definitely did some great rail surfing. There were a couple critical turns, a lot of spray, engaged that rail. But the judges have been ultra critical yeah, of have. not finishing off the ride, not getting that barrel section or doing something progressive on that end section. And we know that he loves that kind of approach of just sliding underneath the guillotine. We like the honesty, don't we, Rosie? Yeah, he always gives an honest assessment, though. I feel like he's really good for that. Oh, yeah. And he's his most critical judge, too. Here's Jordy now, starting off on the forehand is the big man from South Africa, riding a Smith Shapes from his dad, Graham who's here at the Surf Ranch as well. Wow, that is a beautiful barrel by Jordy Smith on the opening section on the outside. Going to work now, great use of the rail by Jordy. Into the lip. More of a setup turn right there. That's a nice variation of the layback turn. Once again, slides the fins. More of a board slide right there from Smith. He's gonna set up for the inside of barrel. Much deeper right there at the end. That's good positioning from Smith. And he's going to finish with a layback. So, maybe a bit conservative, but for right now, only looking to beat a 6.17, Rosie. The first completed right mm -hmm. of the evening so far. Tricky it is, mm -hmm. surfing it at night and having this added element and the, all the factors that are coming into today. I mean, this would be the fifth wave that Jordy surfed today at the yeah. Surf Ranch, and we all know how much energy and, and it takes to exert yourself on this wave. Jordy has been really outspoken about how hard it is for him to fit his <laughs> big frame 
into this wave and he's had to kind of adjust the way that he approaches it that was a meat yeah, hook was. i think you know when you're watching it in real time you're like okay that was a sick rail turn and then when you slow it down and you look at what he's doing yeah some really cool moves from <laughs> Jordy. rosie we've seen him perform well on the left before rodeo flips varios pop shove it's will he be able to do it during the night session though kelly said very difficult to perform with airs right here at this time of the day great start here for smith oh that was just majestic on the outside <laughs> for a big man to throw that board around so easily. Very impressive. A couple of foam climbs right there. Great variation from Jordy. Throws the tail around once more. Is the left better than the right now? Might be. Still has a few more sections. Oh, it stalls a bit too much. I was seeing him eye that air section at the end, but I think he mistimed the barrel section just a bit. Honestly, he was like swimming, swinging the hammer at this one. Ooh. Wow, that pace there, you know, half of that board and the fins getting yeah. released. There's just so much control in those maneuvers and the judges really look at that work that's done when you release those fins. Man, that barrel section definitely ran away. It was a tricky one to read. How's this one turn on the outside though, right before he stalled for the barrel and I could just see it coming. He he tried to kick the tail flat up. It's looking good right now. Real wide up, about to hit the lineup on the right hander, and he's up. Big moment for the surfer from Indonesia. At the moment, he's in the lead for rookie of the year. Quick surfer from Bali. Excellent start here for wide up. Gonna pull it for the barrel. This one not really barreling too much at the initial section. And he's just gonna keep it on rail. Attacking the sections one after the other. Great surfing right there and a bit too far behind. He's going to lose out on the second half of that wave. So a great start, Rosie, but maybe the aggressiveness cost him a bit too much. On the opening round to, to this leaderboard format, he's definitely putting more emphasis on his turns, falling out of the yeah. sky there, free falling, and, and getting caught behind. I mean, we've seen that. San Clemente boys stick together. And Rio Wida, the Indonesian, Paddling into this one. He needs something better than a 6.4 to knock Kelly out of second place. Up and right. Oh, oh, up and riding on the left, and he digs his rail. Immediately on the first bottom turn. Wow. You know, he was just obviously stoked for Kanoa, but yeah. like to see Griff lose it by such a small margin. But here we go on this right hander. Let's watch the master at work. Well, he's up and riding. The young Californian from San Clemente. Off to a good start right here, up into the lip. A lot of spray on that one. Great flow so far from Colapinto. Airdrop into the barrel. Excellent positioning. Strider, how's this angle? Oh, it looks like Friday Night Lights, baby. Yeah. Oh, all up in the lip. Bango, one more. <laughs> Christmas tree out the back. Raw, big front side Ooh. gal down into it. Another big sweep. We're talking Griffin called a Pinto time right now, baby. And it is looking good. Oh, what? my. Are you kidding me? Drops the tail into the bowl. What's he got? Deep in the tube, driving. Where is he? There he is. What's he going to do above the lip? What? Come on! Griffin called Pinto, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do this. He is a star under hey. pressure. And he performed <laughs> at the right moment during this event. Crowd loved it. Rosie. What do you wow. think about it? Everything about this just kept me on the edge of my seat. He kept his uh, surfboard on its knife edge. There were so many finesses in this wave that I truly enjoyed. Obviously, the fin ditch when he's sliding around wow. is so special. That right there to place that just before that barrel section and time it so that he's coming out with enough speed to, to pull up into the barrel. But for me, Mitch, okay, the barrel, super sick. But... You like the air, don't you? The slob. It was yeah. such a nice touch. As we see that lofty air, the slob grab right there with that front arm, releases the grab, gets the completion. <laughs> oh, feeding off the emotion and the energy from his friends and family. So Griffin had an 8.77 on the right. Can he do it now on the left? We shall see. I told you that he's just been having fun all year long, and guess what? 
He had a lot of fun on that right. Now on the left, cruisy start for Griff. Into the lip right there. And just going through the motions on this one. Nothing major. That's more like it from Cole Pinto. Much better right there from Griffin. An 8.77 is what he's looking at better. Oh. And goes down. He knew he needed to go big. Didn't have a lot going on at the opening part of that wave. But I mean, Rosie, you move all the way up to first place, drop the highest wave of the night surfing session so far. And now you've got someone like John John coming up next. And he's sitting in that, you know, sixth place position just underneath Griff. This is, you know, this is really. It's imperative. Dual, yeah, yeah, it's imperative. All the events count now for these guys. There's no more throwaway event. So he's looking to beat a 6.77. That would knock Jordy Smith down to third place. And he's up and riding on the right. Still riding that high five from JS. An epoxy board, the EPS build. Oh, looks sharp right now. Great positioning in the barrel on the outside. Seems like he'll make it out with no issues. Wraps it down into the lip and needs some big variation here. That's more like it from Rye. Once again, and he has some amazing blow tails on the backhand as Kalanen. Whoa, that's more like it and maybe a bit too strong for that section there from Rhino. So he's going to go down, but he has one more shot on the left, Rosie. Let's have a look. I mean, he, he, yeah, definitely expecting something a little bit more special from Ryan. He dug the rail, hand. actually. Yeah, he did dig that rail. He gets left behind. There was there was more to it. I mean, I think leading up to that turn, there was a couple missteps. I did a couple turns in the pocket where it was hollow and. Uh, so let's get you get to Ryan's wave here. Yeah, thanks for joining us for the call. Ryan Cowan on his last chance. He went right, got the 417. It's all about getting at least a 6.78 here. Really great start. He's got that real cool, lanky ability to stretch out those carves deeper off the bottom, crushing that section. Little air drop. Mm. That'll put him behind. And will that cost him the wave? Yes, it will. And, you know, I was going to say, if he got around, he was going to have to go just totally ham on the end of that thing. And so if you're going to look at something for the beauty of the wave out here, of, of, of the best surfers out here, it'll show where their little errors are, and it'll show the things they need to work on. And um, I'm not saying that Ryan needs to work on anything. He, he just made a little error in the, in the lip right there. I was and expecting... Then it, and then it, Gives you the whole cost you the whole wave. Cost you the whole wave. Yeah, yeah it's a it tiny it little error, but I was surprised he was trying to throw the tail so much in that section because that's where it starts to run off. It's a fine balance of showing the judges something nuts. Like Yago was really solid out this morning. Could throw a reverse big tail drift, but his motion was always connected to the energy. Everyone's in love with Griffin. His personality is incredible. He's so open and honest about his feelings. As we catch up with John Florence, he's been lethal on the start. I love his versions of cars, how he's been opening up these waves, using that entire rail on that last gouge, and now it's just sit tight in the pit. Florence using the arm bar to slow down, maxing out the tube time. Well done for John, and now he'll down carve as we send it to Strider. Well, it looks like he's going to... Get back into rhythm right here on the inside section. Big blow tail right there. He's looking for more. Slams it again. A lot of water out the back. Timing on point right there. Can he get down under the hood? Let's see what he's got to finish. This is where he can make the break this wave and put himself in a great position. He's going to have to go above the lip. And he does. And sticks it. John Florence, he's here to play under the lights. Sir France Pro. Woo back in this format when it comes into at sudden that session to make finals day. Pete, what did you see at the start? I liked the, the very first turn, you know, and of course, uh, one of the best barrel riders ever, right? Uh, along with the guy sitting next to us. But uh, that arm bar and holding the barrel and just being deep and the length of it. The only thing I could say is that he kind of missed a moment here uh, in the mid part of the wave. Uh, this part where he had to kind of wait to get back to it. As uh, John finishing up with a solid punt, uh, Strider's with John now. I am John. But I think he'll push it a bit more on this left right now, and we'll see if he gets out in front of it instead of plays right in the lip too much, maybe get more out on the face and get that spray going because that's what visually looks really good at night because the, the contrast of the, of the spray. You yeah, know? big fan. 
Here goes John Member, 7-3-3 on his way before. That did take Jordy Smith out of contention for the corner, so he's already in the two spot. This is the, this will be the crucial part because he's a little sleepy start so far, and now he's going to have to play catch up a little bit if it runs on him, but it stayed... It stayed back for him. It almost looks like the wind's offshore on the left right now for a second. Left's better today. There he goes. He found that lip and that reverse. That's the one thing I've, I've seen in the, the, his clips he's been working on is that reverse through the middle of the pool. It's a, it's a variety not many of the regular footers do. Um, only maybe Griffin and Kanoa pull that. And then here's a deep barrel, and we'll see what he flips out at the end on. Backside rotator reverse. John lands it, so a great night session. Completed both rides. I mean, uh, especially with that the reverse in the middle of it, because it was so clean. Yeah, right here. Is this it? Thing. He got that nice. It was real fast. He didn't get stuck at all. He didn't really. Ha you know, he almost did his one bottom turn, as you say. Um, <laughs> yeah, the one rail. The, <laughs> the good thing do, about dude. that wave, that that wave didn't run off and 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 uh, whitewash too close to the to the poles. Um, and then obviously John can fit in any barrel. He's unbelievable and. And uh, see how he, see how, let's see how early he comes out here to set this up. Because a lot of times you try to stand up and the lip hits your head there. And it's hard to do a bottom turn. It's a real lateral kind of air section. And if you if you miss it at all, you're way too late. And Jordy needed a five to beat him, and a perfect wave came. And it was it was like he didn't know if to go for it or not, and he didn't get the score. Oh. <laughs> and it was such a, a heartbreak, you know. Um, uh, so you, you got to set that. You got We all have to set our standard really a lot higher at times. One of the bigger guys on tour getting started. Connor O'Leary slams on the brakes. Great tube approach. Great technique. Look how tight he is in the pocket. I, I noticed the Gooby footers who really ride the barrel well, especially uh, Gabe. He was the first one to really do it. Get up on the front of the board, and it's almost like they create a foam ball behind him that's pushing the tail up. And, and, and coasting them along. They're, they're closing the trap door. And here we go. He's going to get some work here. He gets that really vertical snap and rounds it oh. out. And uh, he's, I think he's going to need something really big here on the end. So we'll see what he, what he does. It's not super deep in the barrel. And I think he knew it. Um, you know, he's probably going to get that work done. I think the Gooby footers on the left on their forehand. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I would say that I, I, I've sensed that. Look at those whips. Those are nice. Strider yelling at him. <laughs> <laughs> or was that right? <laughs> Both of them, probably. I think that was Strider's voice. Just a little late to get the real pop on that. And um, But, you know, John had... Hmm. And he's big, too. He's been working out. He's like twice the size as he was when he qualified a handful of years back. He's a big boy. He's got a lot of power. See all the strength here. Here comes that speed section right through here. you got to get going. Build up all that speed and kind of get your flow, get your feel. Nice critical maneuver in that spot right there. That was that was great. And I expect something big right here, maybe a whip. I think Connor has improved oh. tremendously since he got on tour. He's just become a monster, and uh, he's become so aggressive too. Oh, oh no, too aggressive right there. Mm. Loses it. Remember, he had a solid score though on his right, a seven. Even with the fall and missing the tube on the end section. We take another look. Pete, what did you see at the start? I saw aggressive, as what the Strider had said. If he saw that he was going to do that, and he timed it really well. Um, he saw when those speedy sections were going to happen, and those moments that he was going to capitalize, he did. It's just unfortunate that it's a little extra that he put on right before the barrel section uh, let him down. You know, it didn't give enough push. Uh, I, think, I think there was a little light interference there like <laughs> honestly oh, i think i, I think because the water's clear and the, there's the light a little bit of light behind the wave in your eye and i i feel like he just misjudged you know may, it might have been visual it'd be interesting to hear what he says well and i will say that that's what we've heard right the surfing on the yeah. i mean i don't know how many professional sports go through a platform <laughs> change mm. like surfing did when the ct came here for the first time and i think john's speaking to that it's all of a sudden they're out of their comfort zone, which is the ocean. It's like being at Huntington and guys on the pier are yelling at you. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only place it can really happen, or Chopu. Speaking of HP. Lane. And uh, uh, Kanoa, is, um, he's one of the first people to ever surf the pool here. Um, one of the, I think the, the first group of surfers that ever came in when we opened, he was part of it. And I've always felt like he was a huge standout. He got third in that first event that we had here. Um, and he just gets such a good beat on the wave. He's got that low center gravity, and look how tight he, he's able to turn and throw the tail out the back there. And he gets that, he does, 
He, he has that great whip, but he has a lot of great variety. And that was interesting right there. He's trying to pull in early. He wanted it. And you see he got a little lost on where he was, but um, I, I expect a big reverse right here coming out of the barrel too. Let's see how much spring he gets. And uh, that's a well-ridden wave. I, I, other than uh, got a little bit thrown off on his last turn into the barrel, which I, I think the judges highly score that, to be honest with you. Um, wow, what, but watch how fast Cano is one of the fastest surfers out here. Um, so fun to watch and look at how, look at the spring he gets out of the lip and the tail release. Good variety there. And um, that was really crazy that he did that because the wave was running off on him. It wasn't slowing down. And then he thought it was going to barrel right there. I think that's the only critique you could have of this wave. Um, still gets the little barrel and sets up the air at the end. Yeah, this is interesting because it's right there. I mean, uh, it's it's a question with 7.9. I mean, that feels like it could be a split here uh, with the judges because yeah, right there. I could say I could definitely see him getting the score right now. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Look at his suit. His arm is just full of water yeah. right there. He finally got it out. That happened to me earlier on my first or second right this morning. And um, you saw it when I came out of the barrel. I actually opened. John might be dealing with a ninth now. And remember, he was six, just one spot out of the WSL Final mm -hmm. Five coming into this event. We'll see how it affects his standings heading into El Salvador. Wow, big spray there. See that contrast tonight with the uh, with the, the, the color of the water. And uh, doesn't look like Kanoa's holding back at all here. I think he, he definitely has a chip on his shoulder here and wants that number one spot uh, take away from Griff. He, and he looks more loose to me than he did at the beginning of this contest. I thought in the, in, the, um, in the practice and in the first round, he just looked a little tentative to start. But he's, he's looking better and better now. Definitely opening up. Higurashi air drops, packs oh. the inside barrel nice and deep. Wow. Now room for moves. There's the reverse oh. and that's just we, got tangled up for the fall there. Talking about that late entry into the barrel. See how dramatic that, that's yeah. where you can really pull in some drama into your ride. And, and you get deep. Standing by as we go to the left again, Pete. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, again, he, I, I totally agree, Kelly. He did look a little tentative because uh, he was one of the standouts at, at, the, at this place. So. I've always felt he was one of the standouts, and, and he didn't look that way to me to start the contest. Yeah, and no, it agreed. didn't look like his surfing. It looked like his mindset. We just got to go into the nighttime for uh, Kanoa to go <laughs> come alive. Well, he's been so confident. He was one of the rare guys that would actually do a rotator on the outside section yeah. of the yeah. right. Yeah. He was oh. never afraid of falling. That was such a cool entry into that. Look how deep he is. You just can't see any of the board. And that's the minute differences. And see now the lips already... It's already disappearing. It was just a half second too late to get the tail hot. I'm not deserting the uh, Space Coast uh, board riders. Oh, see, they got uh, third. Yeah, Dave, got... Dave Spear, Rhino, I got my yeah. boys in there. Yeah, they were there. Let's see it. Here comes Cole Hausman. <clears throat> I haven't seen a lot of Cole's rights, um, so I'm interested to see, but on the left, he's deadly. Cool pace to get this one going. Just nice and calm. Pulling into this first section. That Mom and Dad drove up that, was a, that was a full crumble wave. And I wonder if the judges will take note of that because they did mention to me earlier that if they had a wave that looked like a dud, they could potentially... Um, he's saving his legs for the left. He is least, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I know that's what he's doing. Look, he's, he's cruising on this wave. He's, he's like, barely trying. Um, so I, is I, this part of the plan or is a reaction to that crumble on yes. the start? How about uh, this? Dude, I was waiting for a layback. I wanted to see that. Nice work, Cole. I like it. I think he was saving his legs. I think he knows he's he's more dominant on his, on his forehand. Try to take a top two spot from Kanoe Garashi and Griffin Cole Lepinto. We'll be right back for more action right after this. And Cole is getting ready right now. He's winding up. Easy, easy roll in right here. Looks like we got a nice, nice roll in. Here we go. He's setting it up. First turn. Snap again. Finding face into the lip line already. Slams it again, beautiful. A lot of spray out of the top right there. Big air. Oh, and he's gonna get caught behind. Yeah, well, I can't do it there. Unfortunate. <laughs> you need to go to down see the line more. more. It certainly would have lost. Wow, what a start. Those powerful turns are insane. And a good start. Watch how much power he's got. I love this third turn. This one right here, that's a critical section. And when you were looking into it, you could really see it. And that was super technical and critical. Had he made that, he was looking at a giant score if he got back around that. 
Um, I really like the start of that wave. I was surprised he went so early on that because he. It seems like he has learned the wave. He, he's he's had a. You know, a dozen or more waves in the last couple of days as free surf. Actually, he told um, me 26. Let's see this. Italo is going to go crazy right here. Italo Ferreira, one of the fastest surfers in the world, 2019 world champ, throwing down some nice verticals. He's one of Bells with his backhand. Dangerous at waves like Karamas. His backside whip is really speedy. And now he's in. He's still in the barrel section here. This is where I got kind of caught up. Right about. Right about here. Um, it's still kind of tubing usually, so you, your pace changes. But look how fast he is. If I'm going to be critical of anything, there's a little bit of repetition going on over and over. Tons of turns, but kind of a lot of repetitive angles and lines. Um, he's going to do something psycho right here. Oh. What's he doing? Oh, wow. He's Superman. trying to do a kickflip to <laughs> floater. What was he doing? It was, like that was insane. He literally tried to... Uh, that was good. Maybe that was he was cool. going... Maybe Rodney Mullen would have been proud. He was going oh. for a dark slide. <laughs> First ever. About the same about the repetition. A quick score in 5.77 for Italo. Yeah, that's definitely it. But let's see here. Check this out. Ton of speed. And whoa. Oh, yeah, I think the wind just caught it. The wind just caught it. I thought he actually kicked it into, in, into that. But uh, different angle here. You see that wave just hitting him in the butt a little bit as he went up. And... Um, but he was he was 100% committed to not getting barreled and to just try to do a huge air. Italo Ferreira fighting for a spot in the quarterfinals. He's sitting in the eighth spot right now, so he's trying to get an 8-3-1, Waz. He is, and he's looking intent. He was a little upset with his Superman attempt, so now he's going to come back, and he's going to go to work in the lip. Bang! Right there, a lot of spray out the back. Vertical, right up in that section. That was a hollow, heavy section. Wow, Joe, this thing is insane. He's definitely fired up. He knows it's coming down to this wave. Canoa got an 8-3. That's what he's got to beat. Italo floats his section. Now setting up a bottom turn. There's the wrap. Throwing some water. Jams it quickly with that layback. Now off the lip. Now it's getting nice and hollowed out. Sits right in the pit. Well done for Italo. What does he have for us? Throws the fins out. Stomps it, reversing the flats. And you love when Italo celebrates because all the fans do the same thing with him. Seven championship tour wins in his career along with that world title. Absolutely, he got it. Um, those were nice. And no wave's going to outrun Italo. He's the fastest surfer in the world. Um, and there, it's just a little bit of catch up there. That was pretty cool, but it was a little, it was a little off for him. And that was just a climb. He was kind of catching up. And that was, he almost mistimed that. Um, it set him into the barrel kind of deep. I'm, I mean, look, I'm being critical because we're yeah. talking about the best surfers in the world. Yeah. I, I, I feel like it's maybe just under. I think you think it's just over. Yep. Um, what do you think, Joe? You it's just a good time? debate anyways. I'll take the under. <laughs> Gosh, it's such that a good was, question. I think, uh, I think cool Kanoa's error. looking solid, but ah, the finish was so incredible. With the speed he had, I think he almost made up for it in the back half of that wave. If you go oh, back to Kanoa's.